Welcome back to the show, everybody. We got a great one for you lined up. We're going to talk about BNB Tether Ethereum. Are they all securities? We're going to hear from Jeremy Hogan and his point of view about what he thinks of those protocols and networks and tokens and how they may just end up in a security designation. We're also going to talk about a real quick look at a $150 to $200 XRP per coin by the end of this year, as well as some other news. Let's just go ahead and roll that beautiful intro. Here we go. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley Above and everything that we're talking about here today. 1.6, almost 1.7 trillion for the cryptocurrency market cap collectively. The market itself is up almost 11%, 10.95%. Boy, do we need it. Let's see it get back to 2.5 trillion, then move to a new all time high for the crypto space to three, four, and five trillion. That's what we're really looking for. So the market is showing a little positive sign today, looking down here at the number seven spot courtesy of the dereliction of duty and intimidation tactics by the sec we're at 87 cents right now up 4.4 percent and still off by almost 10 percent on the seven day look at the range really quickly here before we get into the news 88 cents is where we're sitting and it says now we're ranging between 82 and 89 cents we had a little action this morning that gave us that bump up we'll have to keep an eye on these things we are going to look at some a price prediction from one particular group but we we will remind everybody that this is a crucial moment that we're in right now, according to the technical analysts. Either we're going to see uh, XRP move up and test that upper 90 cent to $1.05, $1.10 cent range, and it's going to try to punch through that resistance, or we're going to continue to see that sideways movement and then possibly roll over and find lower support in the 70 and 65 cent range. We're not sure yet, but this is a moment to watch, no doubt about it. It, we will do so. I want to let everybody know before we move forward, we have a Facebook page. You can now follow us on Facebook. If you're on Twitter, click that top bit.ly link. The second one takes you to the YouTube channel. This one takes you to the Facebook page and it's under Digital Perspectives News. Digital Perspectives News. And you can find all our content is being uploaded on this page so you can watch it there, as well as there will be exclusive content on Facebook's page that you will not find anywhere else. And by the way, when we hit 5,000 followers on this Facebook page, we will be doing a live to celebrate that on Facebook. And to top that, we are going to be doing some lives from Facebook instead of from YouTube as well. So look forward to that and follow us there also. All right. So now this is Paul Tudor Jones, who's a big time investor, and he's obviously taken a position in Bitcoin. We'll talk about that here in just a few minutes. I'm not going to play this clip, but what he talks about in this clip is how the markets have been absolutely bat s crazy. I think you all know what that means. And we know that Paul Tudor Jones has said it is time for us to get back into the normal flow into of what we had prior to the pandemic and this past year and everything that came with it. So now then the conversation drifted to this where they talk about what happens if the Reddit crowd, which was the Wall Street bets crew, gets into the commodity sector and starts trying to move and manipulate the markets in these areas. What I'd love about this conversation from the very beginning is that it overlooks the manipulation of the greediest people that have been controlling the markets from day one. Now that it's possible for the retail market to have some sort of influence, big or little, oh, it's a problem. But listen to what he says here in this quick clip. Let's listen. Where to put your money? I'd actually love to hear about it in the context of being a trader, but also actually as a long-term investor. What are you supposed to do in this environment? Well, I'm going to watch the Fed on Wednesday. Uh, if they treat these numbers, which were material events, they're very material, if they treat them with nonchalance, then I, I think it's just a green light to, 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 to bet heavily on every inflation trade. The idea that inflation tra is transitory, uh, to me, is, is that, that one just doesn't work the way I see the world. So I look at $88 trillion of assets under management by asset managers. Of that, 
$670 billion are invested in commodity indices like uh, Bloomberg Commodity Index, Goldman Sachs Commodity Index. That's about three quarters of 1%. If I rewind just to 2011, when inflation was peaking at 3%, not CPI at 4.9, um, those same investors had 1.2% of their assets, which would imply today if they just got back to wait, another $400 billion of buying in commodity indices. And if you, certainly the impact models that we run would, would argue that GSER or BCOM would double or triple. So you've got, if I just look at where asset managers are, 60-40 types, the one thing that they should be invested in, they're not invested in, probably because they're hearing these assurances that inflation is transitory. So you've got this massive short, really, in the commodity complex, a, a massive short there. So that makes me think that, um, and I'll look at the balances in a variety of commodities, and they're all so razor thin. They're all so razor thin. And this is just what happens if institutional money right. would get to where they should be, given the level of real rates. What happens if the Reddit crowd ever gets into commodities? God forbid if the bullies, the financial markets, ever were to take it on, for instance, like retail did back in the 70s. So here I got to be honest. I mean, you know... If you and I could have played the clip prior to this one too, you know, he sees massive problems coming in the market. That's the long and short of it here. And then, of course, then they blame it on, you know, the Reddit crowd and the Wall Street bets crew. But the reality here is, is Paul Tudor Jones has allocated about and suggests a 5% allocation to Bitcoin and crypto as an effective portfolio diversifier. He said uh, coin shares, which is Daniel Masters, by the way, who is the one who we covered here on the channel plenty of times. I don't know why I haven't followed it, but we're going to now. But but coin shares with Daniel Masters is the gentleman who back in 2018 who said at a conference that obviously Ripple and XRP would be out and out regulated. And that is something I'll never forget. But they recommend a 4% allocation, but they highlight the fact that Paul Tudor, Tudor Jones, who is who we just listened to, uh, is doing a 5% allocation. And I believe that is a hedge to what he knows is coming from the conventional markets, albeit commodities or stocks, right? All right, let's keep this thing moving. Imagine here from Crypto Bull 2020, Imagine XRP soon to be determined not a security, while Ethereum, Binance Coin, and Tether will be declared a security. Imagine this. This is from the most recent video from Jeremy Hogan. And shout out to Jeremy Hogan and Legal Briefs. Um, Binance Coin and Tether very likely to be classified as securities, and Ethereum 2.0 isn't, isn't too safe either. Says Jeremy Hogan. Let's get down into this. The legal battle between the U.S. Uh, Securities Exchange Commission has been well publicized with Ripple. Entire crypto community is eagerly awaiting to see where it goes. However, if you're holding Tether, Binance Coin, there may be a reason for you to be concerned as well. According to one legal expert, which is Jeremy Hogan, BNB and USD Tether fit the criteria that the SEC looks for securities violation. Now, here we see once Ethereum migrates to proof of stake, it could become much more likely to attract the wrath of the SEC as well. Attorney Jeremy Hogan looked at the probability of the SEC cracking down in his latest video. Hogan is beloved in the crypto community for sure uh, uh, for his legal brief videos. And he goes on to say here, if we look at Bitcoin, the king of cryptos is at least susceptible to being labeled a security. However, contrary to popular opinion, Bitcoin is also decentralized to a degree. 1,000 people People own up to 40% of the supply and 2% of the wallets control 95% of the Bitcoin circulation. If the SEC believes that there was some common enterprise that manipulate the price of Bitcoin, it could come after that top crypto as well. We've talked about that possibility here. The other possibility really quick here is think about what digital asset securities are and how Gary Gensler could be at the SEC and write a few issuances that could encompass these things where the current structure and framework doesn't do so now. 
there is some of the things we want to be paying attention to, right? Because it's not as simple as does it line up now. They could write things that really embrace some of these ideas. Ethereum is very decentralized, however. Unlike Bitcoin, Ethereum has a central entity, which is the Ethereum Foundation, which also has a lot of influence on crypto. Even more critically, Ethereum raised money from investors before it went live in a presale, which is known as an initial coin offering, which is also known as security. Now, if Ethereum were to switch to 2.0, the danger meter goes up from a 4 to, out of 10 to a 60% chance, he's saying on his meter that he's provided here. Ethereum switching to 2.0 protocol, which is staking your Ethereum, would make it even more likely to be classified as security, Hogan believes. The biggest issue stems from the staking functionality of ETH 2.0, in which investors lock away their money and expect to earn profits. This will go towards the SEC's rule that investors expect a profit from the efforts of others. Tether it's another one here, looking at a 90% chance on his scale here that Tether's one of the most controversial coins here, according to Hogan, the most likely to descend upon by the SEC. Issues uh, stretch back for years. The New York Attorney General accusing the company of misleading the market about its tokens backing. In addition, the company prints USD Tether at will and is directly involved in their market performance. That's not good. Binance Coin could see an eight eight point five, like a eighty five percent chance here, right? So doesn't fare too well either. Binance, the exchange, had an ICO in 2017, sold BNB to public and some of them American. The exchange has great influence on the performance and profitability of BNB token. And even if it buys back some of the BNB and burns them just to make BNB more valuable. So there you see that. And obviously, go watch this video from uh, attorney Jeremy Hogan at Legal Briefs. He is amazing. And for some strange reason, you're not subscribed. You should be. Now, very quickly, I just want to say I out of this that, you know, um, there was a call to action from Chris Larson to, in fact, do what? Move Bitcoin from proof of work to proof of stake. Uh-oh. That would certainly put it in question as a security, and you could make that argument now. Um, looking here, this is big news for Flair. By the way, I'm going to be doing exclusive in just minutes from now after this video is done with Clinton Donnelly. He is going to tackle the Spark token tax implication issue. We will have that for you. But shout out to Flair Finance, who brings on Zenfin, which is the XDC token, as a part of their uh, platform, and they have pledged, uh, Zenfin has pledged five. 5 million XDC to the APY cloud for governance staking. So there's another one to the list right there. So there's also a current contest for prizes and stuff in XRP. So make sure you check that out. Very quickly, I wanted to remind you from James Rule XRP here. And thank you for this, James. Great to see you, my friend. Uh, Algo ADA uh, CELO, or ch however you want to say it, CELO, XRP, Solana, and XLM are all cited in the World Economic Forum document. And here's XRP cited out of that list. The XRP ledger is global open source public blockchain that focuses on payments use cases. XRP boasts 1,500 transactions per second, and it only costs 400 thousandths, I believe, uh, per transaction. And settles in three seconds. Follow resources available to learn more about the scalability of the XRP ledger. And it gives the other token token layouts as well. This document, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, is from this month, right? June, I believe it is. Yeah, it is from this month, just released. So it is still on the table. The SEC lawsuit doesn't scare the World Economic Forum either. And I was happy to find out that out of all of these tokens that the World Economic Forum was touting, I hold four out of the six that are mentioned. I got ALGO, ADA, XRP, and XLM. Now, I'm not giving financial advice. None of this is financial advice, but I just want to be full disclosure and share that information. So with that, let's move here very quickly because this is a nice sum up right here that I love from Bond Crypt. Spark token claim is over. And this is an overview of the space and current events that are happening here. It says, uh, SEC lawsuit is bobbing along, waiting to be told to settle. Flair Finance Partnership with Zenfin XDC, not FSAT. El Salvador seeking volcanologists for harnessing Bitcoin mining. Seriously? Flair Networks going live soon, June, July time frame. That's right. Opportunities are diminishing. The new financial system is imminent. It's a stock market crash. We it wish we knew the dates, but has to happen for the flip of the switch. 
all will happen in the blink of an eye. Be calm, be patient. We look back in one day regretting not buying now the internet of value. And he finishes with saying, our days are numbered. We won't see these opportunities ever again. When utility kicks in, wave goodbye. Flare Networks is a beast. PolySign and Codius have this in mind. Consider yourselves the fortunate ones for being part of this fourth industrial revolution. Wow. Well said, Bond Crypt, putting it out, laying it down like it's hot this morning. And here's a quick prediction shared by Crypto Bull 2020. And it wasn't his prediction, but it was a shared prediction. And I just wanted to share this because I know it's getting a lot of attention. And I wanted to touch on it very quickly. It doesn't give a long or, or heavy explanation other than to say when it shows the chart, basically, if we can see May 2017 through January 2018 repeat, then this is where we would be talking about somewhere in the neighborhood of 160 to possibly a $200 XRP in this bracket here. And this bracket actually goes from 100 to 170 sums, 176 bucks, but it could poke up a little more than there. And they are showing a time frame that would put us closer to the end of this year and possibly going into the the early part of next year. But look, this is all based on what? The fractals of the past, right? So what history has shown us between 27 and I mean uh, 2017 and 2018, we have to see if that's going to play out. I I don't know what happens, but I'm certainly a believer in a very high priced XRP at some point, and I believe that what was mentioned by Bond Crypt, which is the utility of these tokens start to play out and start to prove out. And I believe we will start to see an opportunity for the use case utility of tokens like XRP to play out once the case with the SEC is wrapped up and resolved. So with that being said, I do want to show people here before we get out of here, I trust capital. I tell you, it's the best gold, crypto, silver, IRA on the planet, bar none. And guess what? They're connected with Coinbase Custody now. I covered this when they did it, but I just want to highlight and remind people it is a big step forward with crypto IRA industry because iTrust Capital has selected Coinbase Custody to secure their digital assets on iTrust Cap uh, for the iTrust Capital platform. And this is remarkable to me because they are now engaged with Coinbase Custody to secure platform digital assets. This provides the assurance that clients' assets are stored with one of the world's most trusted cold storage providers. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to do it for me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. Share with somebody you know. And hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Check out all the links in the description box and comment section. They are trusted, vetted links. I'll catch each and every one of you on the next one.